Hi, in this video, I'm going to review this Tomlov DM602 Flex 10.1 inch digital microscope. It was provided to me by Tomlov, and I will leave a product link in the video description below for those who are interested in getting one after watching this video. On this channel, I had reviewed a couple of digital microscopes before, and initially I thought I was definitely going to use them quite often. But in reality, I have not used those digital microscopes that much. And the main reason is because of the integrative stance. On the left side, that's an Star digital microscope I had reviewed on this channel before. And you can see with the stand, the working area is somewhat limited. A lot of times I could not get the scope to focus on an area I wanted to see if the board is larger than the base here, because we have this post at the back. The height adjustment range is also another issue, and sometimes you just can't get it to view circuit board that is still mounted in the case because of the height limitation here. But this DM602 Flex seems to have addressed these limitations. You can see that the scope is mounted on this adjustable arm assembly. It is not the smoothest to move around, but it does have quite a bit of range. Let me demonstrate here. You can see that I can push the arm down, I can lift the arm up, I can swirl it around. So that is the range of motion of this articulating arm here. Besides using the arm to adjust the height, you can also adjust the height via the knob on the side. So I can show you here. You can see that we have this knob, just like your regular stand mount microscopes. So you can use this screw here to push it down and adjust the knob. Also, you can see we can adjust the tilt here. And of course, there are a few other adjustments as well. As you can see, the combined assembly has quite a few degrees of freedom. Of course, you can also tilt the screen upwards if you'd like to. With this combination of adjustments, you can move the digital microscope across the working area very easily. And that's yet. When you're done using it, you can just simply swing it out of the way. So it is definitely very practical to use. Now, the downside of this articulating arm is that it flexes quite a bit when you are adjusting it. To be honest, it won't be an issue unless you are using the supplied microscope lens, which I will show you a little bit later. The microscope lens only has an object distance range between 4 to 5 millimeters. So with this much flex, it actually is quite difficult to get the object in focus. That said, I wouldn't be using the microscope feature that often. So for my main use cases, which are mainly for electronics work, the rigidity of the stand should not be an issue. And here's a look of everything that the DM602 Flex comes with. It has a ring light, which we'll test out a little bit later. It also comes with a USB power adapter, which is nice. The included SD card is a 64 gigabytes one, which is quite generous. And you also get a microscope stage. We will take a look at these accessories one by one. Oh, by the way, because of the DM602 is touted as a soldering microscope, it also comes with a rather heavy soldering mat, as you can see here. It has a lot of sections for you to put your disassembled parts. And the neat thing is that it has these magnetic areas where you can put your screws and other loose parts, which is great. With that said, I do wish it's just a simple mat without any of these bells and whistles, as the actual working area you can see is quite small. It is just measuring around 15 centimeters in width. Anyway, for today's video, I'm not going to use this mat as I already have an ESD mat on the table here. But if you are soldering on a wooden desk and need some protection, this mat will definitely come in handy. The lens I currently mounted on has an object range from just above one centimeter to 32 centimeters, and that's quite a decent range. You can see right now the circuit board under here is at a distance quite far away from the scope here, and if we measure it, it is actually more than 30 centimeters. At this distance, the microscope will not interfere with your soldering work at all, which is quite impressive. You can control the display with either the buttons on the screen itself or using the supplied remote control. Now, given that the assembly does not have enough rigidity, you probably want to refrain from using the buttons on the screen as it will shake the image. The remote control is actually quite easy to use. Let me show you here. You can, for example, adjust the zoom level. And of course, that's digital zoom only. And let's see what else we have. You can adjust the contrast. You can also change it to black and white. And my favorite feature is this one. This one, you can actually invert 
the color. And that is sometimes useful when you are looking at markings. So sometimes the contrast is a little bit better in this inverted color scheme. And of course, you can restore to default. And to take a picture, you just press the picture button. And of course, you can use a remote to take a video as well. So you just press OK, and it will start the video, as you can see. And then you press it again, the video stops. Now, it is a pity that the video recording on this microscope does not include sound. Otherwise, it would be very useful, as I could just use this to record my teardown videos. Unfortunately, the screen itself is glossy. You know that I don't like glossy screens. Now, there's nothing wrong with the glossy screens. It's just they make video recording very difficult. Oh, check this out. It appears that the remote for the Tom Love microscope also works on this Endostar microscope as well. You can see that all the functionality that we saw earlier all works here. I guess this is not entirely surprising, as the circuit design underneath are probably more or less the same. Anyway, with this huge working distance, doing soldering is not going to be a problem at all. For example, if I were just trying to put my soldering iron here, you can see you can see the screen very clearly, and also you can work on the circuit board without any obstruction from the microscope. Also, you can use an external monitor with the HDMI output. I actually find this feature even more useful, as I already have a display mounted on the shelf here for monitoring my video recording. So I can easily hook the microscope up with that display. Now, it would be nice if the screen on the microscope is mirrored instead of going blank when using an external monitor. Now let's take a look at the supplied ring light. The ring light has its own 12 volts power adapter. You can actually buy these ring lights separately if you already have a microscope but don't have a ring light already. Just Google microscope ring light. And you can see we can turn it on. And we do have this brightness adjustment on the side, so that is fairly standard. Let me put this on. So this is secured onto the ring here via this three positioning screws. And it does take some effort to put it on, especially if you have the shorter lens here, like what I have here. So let me put it on. Now the ring light is on, we can adjust the brightness so we can see the components underneath here very clearly. Ring light is actually very good for giving out uniform lighting. And I can also adjust the brightness of the light as well. For practicality, I would definitely choose ring light over these gooseneck lights at any time. But the gooseneck light does have one key advantage when viewing IC markings, as sometimes you do need to adjust the orientation of light in order to see the markings clearly. One common problem of the ring light is, depends on the lens you're using and also the working distance, you can actually sometimes see the reflection of the ring. And of course, right now, I actually don't need to use the ring light at all. I can just turn it off. Anyway, the field of view is actually quite good with this lens, and the magnification is sufficient for most of the electronic work that I do. Right now, for example, at 30 centimeters, you can see the field of view is actually around 10 centimeters. That's sufficient. If you wanted higher magnification with this lens, of course, you can always move it closer to the surface. So let me readjust the focus. And you can see we're getting a lot closer. And at this distance, right now we're about 16 centimeters. We still have a field of view of around 5 centimeters. And this specific lens has a minimum working distance of just one centimeter. As you can see, at this close range, we can see the components very, very well. And of course, right now, you can see that I have the ring light on, and you can no longer see the reflection. So that ring light is very helpful at this close distance. Now let's check out the higher magnification lens that was supplied. This one, as you can see, has pretty much the same maximum working distance but uh, the minimum is at 9 centimeters instead of the 1 centimeter on this lens. So let's swap it out and take a look. To swap out the lens, you just need to unscrew the screws on both sides. And we can remove the lens. You can see this is the stock lens. Object distance between 12 millimeters and 320 millimeters. So this is the lens I'm going to try. 
Now, this lens, if you look carefully, it almost looks like a lens with an extension tube used for macro photography. So my guess is that the field of view is going to be very limited, but let's give it a try here. And you can already see that the screen is pretty dark without any backlight. So I'm just going to secure it with the camera here. It's actually a little bit of awkward. So let me go here. just going to secure the lens. As you can see here, the magnification of this lens is a lot higher than the previous lens I had on. Now, the manual suggests that this lens is better suited for a soldering job. I would actually argue that the previous one is much better. You can see here, the magnification is pretty high, but the field of view is actually very narrow. And you can see we're only able to capture about 1.5 centimeter in the view here. And if I were to do a soldering job, here is a soldering iron with conical tip. You can see, and you will just see how big the tip is under the microscope here. But with this lens, it does give you the ability to zoom in onto the object you are observing. I suppose it would be very useful for inspecting the markings on some tiny components. So let's uh, take a look here. And here I have a board. This is, by the way, from a mouse. And let's actually adjust it so that we can focus here. You can see the marking on that tiny QFN chip. And let me tell you, without this microscope, it's actually very difficult to see the marking. As you can see, that's just a tiny board. And the QFN chip here is very tiny, and the marking is not that prominent. But under the microscope with the correct lighting, you can see we can observe that with no problem at all. Now the fun part. Let's swap in the microscope lens and take a look at some of the slides that is included with this microscope. You do get a light stage that came with the package. And also this is powered by the same wiring harness of the microscope here. So you can adjust the backlight. Let me just show you here. You can make it brighter and you can make it dimmer with the integrated control here. And here is the microscope lens. You can see the object distance is four millimeters to five millimeters. Let's put it on. All right, it took me quite a few minutes to get a picture in focus. What you are looking at here is pine stem. That's one of the slides that was supplied with this microscope. This is where this articulating arm falls short, in my opinion. As the object distance is only between 4 to 5 millimeters, any disturbance makes the image unstable. As you can see here, if I just tap the table, you can see the image started wobbling. Of course, if I touch the microscope, you will see that essentially you are not able to get a stable image. So that's why it took me quite some time to get it set up just right, as it's very hard to set the focus precisely. If you're going to use the microscope lens more often, you probably want you to consider the other version with the integrated stand. But as you can see here, once you get the focus right, the image quality actually is quite excellent. And what you're looking at here are the cells on the onion skin. And you can just see how much magnification we have here. And again, it took me a while to adjust the focus just right. And as you can see, any minor disturbance will cause the image to wobble. So to conclude, the Tomlov DM602 Flex Digital Microscope is a rather practical microscope for soldering and electronics work. If you have young kids or if you are curious, you will find the included microscope lens useful as well. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes a video like this possible. Thanks for watching and I'll catch up with you next time.